Hey everyone. There's one really important thing we need to discuss now that we know how to relate the trigonometric functions to the coordinates of a point on uh, the plane, particularly with regards to the unit circle, and that is which of the trigonometric functions are positive and which of the trigonometric functions are negative in each quadrant. This is actually really, really important for some later problems that you're going to do. So let's take a look at that. First we need to remind ourselves what the trig functions are with respect to coordinates. And we're talking about the unit circle at this point. But this will apply to all coordinates and not just those on the unit circle. My x value is cosine. My y value is sine. y over x is tan. So the reciprocal x over y is cotan. The reciprocal of cosine is secant. And the reciprocal of sine is cosecant. So let's take a look at how that relates to the sines in each of the uh, four, quad uh, four quadrants. Excuse me. So let's take a look first of all at quadrant one. We know that any point in quadrant one has a positive x value and a positive y value. Any point in quadrant one. So x is positive and y is positive. So in terms of our trig functions, if we look at them, x is positive, cosine has to be positive. If x, if y is, if y is also positive, sine is also positive. And I think if you look down the list, you'll find that every single one of these has to be positive. Y over X, positive over a positive is going to give you a positive number. X over Y will give you a positive. 1 over X will give you a positive, And 1 over Y will give you a positive. So all of them are positive in quadrant 1. And none of them are negative. OK, in quadrant 2. In quadrant 2, all of my points in quadrant 2 have a negative x value and a positive y value. A negative x value and a positive y value. So let's take again a look at our positive and negative trig functions. Anything that has strictly positive, um, anything that has strictly positive in it is going to be excuse me, has y in it will be positive and nothing else but y, which means that sine will be positive, because it is y, and the reciprocal of sine, which is cosecant, will also be positive. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, sine is y, cosecant is 1 over y. All the rest have an x value in them, and x is negative. So all the rest, that would be cosine, its reciprocal secant, tan, and cotan all have to be negative in quadrant two. Okay, quadrant three. In quadrant three, x is still negative, but y is also negative. So x is negative and y is negative. So when we take a look at our positive and negatives again, the only thing that's going to give me a positive value is when I have x over y or y over x, because I'll have a negative divided by a negative. So tan and cotan will be positive. All the rest of them have either an x or a y with nothing to balance it, so they're going to be negative. So we got cosine, sine, and their reciprocals secant and cosecant are all negative. So again, by looking at our signs of x and y and knowing how our coordinates relate to the trig functions, we can determine the signs on these trig functions. Okay? In quadrant four, my x is positive and my y is negative. x is positive, 
y is negative. So in terms of positive and negative in quadrant 4, anything that has strictly an x value is going to be positive. So that would be secant and cosine. Cosine and its reciprocal. The others, which have a y, sine and its reciprocal are going to be negative because y is negative. And tan and cotan will be negative because y is negative and x is positive. And that ratio of positive to a negative or a negative to a positive will give you a negative answer as well. So all the rest, sine, cosecant, tan, and cotan are all negative. So there are your signs for your six trig functions in each one of the quadrants. Um, there is a, a little uh, memory device that I know some students have used. And it's, it works pretty well, I think. And that is, if you go in order of the quadrants, all students take calculus. And then the only thing you have to remember is that in um, 2, 3, and 4, you also have to include the reciprocal of each one of those, the reciprocal of sine, the reciprocal of tan, and the reciprocal of cosine. I hope that little memory device helps. And that is all we need to talk about in terms of the sine of trig functions by quadrant. Thanks.